Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Well, let's go. Okay. Now, second pick. So we have a Dream Trawler. So we've got a few interesting options here. Uh, Lionfish could set up for the instant speed deck, as well as a Nyad. We've got a bit of interaction with turn to fish and dismissal. Could go for the Envoy if we want to go all in with enchantments like the presence. Blue White doesn't have like a super strong identity necessarily, like some of the other color pairs do. But of course we want to play this Dream Trawler, so. Uh, Anax, of course, would be the best individual card in the pack. But uh, when we open a bomb like Dream Trawler, I think it's okay to force Blue White in this case to make sure we can cast it. Even if that means taking uh, some weaker cards in some packs. Commanding Presence. Like, we don't need to put a Commanding Presence on the Dream Trawler to win the game. Dream Trawler by itself is good enough. So I don't necessarily have a strong incentive to go in the kind of Aura Synergy deck. Uh, turn to Fish is always fine if we need some interaction, so I could also take that. Third pick. Best card in the pack is the Acolytes. Uh, best card for our deck. It's between Pegasus and Nyads. Don't mind the Nyads. Pegasus, decent flyer. Also good recipient of Auras, and uh, Lifelink is always nice when you're in a racing situation. Uh, other very good cards in the pack, of course, also include the Mars Grasp. And we could potentially splash like a third color if we pick up a couple amulets for fixing. But uh, if possible, we probably want to stick to blue-white for the most part. Since the Dream Trawler is not super easy to cast if we're uh, splashing. Don't really have a strong reason to prefer Pegasus or Nyad here, but I could see Pegasus being uh, fine too here. Alright, now we have Triumphant Surge, which I don't mind as a one-off in the main deck. There's usually at least one target in the opponent's deck. Chain to Memory could also be fine. Yeah, I think I still take the Surge though. And we can probably pick up one of these Envoys later if we really want it, but don't have a strong reason to want one yet. All right, more Nyads, although a lot of nice cards here. Deny the Divine plays well alongside our Nyads. We've got a Vexing Goal for kind of the Flash creature theme. Another Pegasus. I think I might want to Deny the Divine here. We're not going to have a ton of interaction in blue-white otherwise. And if our win condition is Dream Trawler, then we don't really need to worry too much about picking up small flying creatures like Vexing Goal, since we know we have a bomb that can win the game by itself. So I think I would rather have more interaction. But a Vexing Goal would also be a good addition for sure. And what do we think of Shoal Kraken in the deck? How many enchantments do we have? Uh, not too many. Nyads and Ichthyomorphosis are the two enchantments so far, but it doesn't take much to pick up a couple more. And it's an extra way to maybe help us uh, find Dream Trawler. We've got a Stern Dismissal, which we could also potentially play, but it does have its limitations since we can bounce our own creatures with it, unlike Unsummon. Uh, sea Guard and Turtle are good defensive creatures, which we also could use if our plan is to win with flying creatures. But uh, don't mind a Shoal Kraken here. Alright, another Nyad seems to go pretty late. That's also an incredibly late Renata. Seventh pick, definitely a very first pickable card. But uh, blue is also seem pretty open in these last couple packs. So like, I could take Renata on the off chance that I want to try a weird three color deck. Or I can just stick to the Nyads. I think I prefer Nyad over Memory Drain, which is a bit clunky, but once we have two or three Nyads, I could see taking Drain later. And we can probably pick up a Turtle if we want it at some point. Another Denied Divine looks good. Can I take a third Nyad, or we can take our first Eidolon of Philosophy, which 
also triggers Constellation for the Shoal Kraken. Potentially a way of drawing some cards in the late game. So it's also another way of finding in the Dream Trawler. From the looks of it, the bots don't seem to be taking Nayat too highly, so we could end up with a third one later. So I don't mind taking our first Eidolon of Philosophy. Alright, so we wield the Stinging Lionfish. I guess I don't mind uh, taking it now, just to help out the curve since we already have a decent chunk of 3s, but we don't have any 2-drops yet. Let's take our Lionfish. And uh, I guess Field of Ruin for the sideboard in case we're up against the Labyrinth. And I might play Chain to Memory. Alright, blue seemed wide open in the first pack. Got a very late Renata. White hasn't seen particularly open. But um, outside of that late Renata, also haven't really identified a second color that was wide open like blue was. Yeah, sure, I might even play some of these Sea Guards. Moving into the second pack, we could take another Triumphant Surge, another Eidolon of Philosophy. I guess I didn't see the Revoke Existence, that's also a decent option here. Yeah, definitely don't mind having one of these Disenchants in my main deck, so I'll probably be taking that here. Uh, Flicker Fate can be a nice trick, a lot of different applications, not gonna go over all of them, but you can usually find use with it. Um, don't seem to have the best deck for it though. It's uh, definitely better in more aggressive decks or decks with more auras. That being said, I don't want another Sea Guard. Could maybe take a second Eidolon. Uh, Altar of the Pantheon maybe helps me ramp into the Dream Trawler, but I'm not super interested in this. Yeah, it's pretty much like a Flicker of Fate or Eidolon. Or I could consider one of the splash cards in the pack, like Fateful End or Myers Grasp. On the off chance that uh, we end up splashing a third color somehow. Yeah, we're not really a beatdown deck, so we don't want uh, Indomitable Will. We need to be a bit more aggressive for that to work. I think I'm okay with another Eidolon. We can just be the Dirtle deck that uh, sits back behind a wall of uh, five toughness creatures, draw some cards, and eventually win with a uh, Dream Trawler, hopefully. And then there's this pack. Uh, Heliot's Pilgrim is usually pretty good. Do we have any auras to search up? Can find Ichthyomorphosis. And that's it, but we can probably pick up another one at some point. Uh, Elite Instructors, like a fine filler card, but nothing exciting. Don't mind a Pilgrim. Could take a Wave Rider, which at this point we do have a decent chunk of enchantments to trigger Constellation. Could be a 3 3 flying creature on offense, which could be reasonable. Uh, could take Amulet in case we want to splash, although we don't have any escape synergies, so filling the graveyard with Amulet is not a huge uh, deal in this deck. Could take a second to revoke existence, even if we don't main deck it, could be a serviceable sideboard card. Or I could take Presence, although we're not a great presence deck since we don't have many cheap flying creatures. Although it would be an extra target for the Helid's Pilgrim. So that's also something to consider. For me it's probably between Revoke and Presence. If we had some more instant speed enchantments to potentially turn this into a 3-3 flyer on defense, I would be more into it, but I don't think we have any instant speed enchantments. So I'll take a commanding presence, but I'm not sure yet if we're gonna main deck it. Ooh, Shimmerwing Chimera seems great. Do need some enchantments like the omens to really take full advantage, but it's usually not too difficult to get some good value out of it. Of course it says up to one enchantment, so you don't have to return anything if you don't want to. And the 4 mana 3 to flyers, not the worst, so that's going to be my pick. And hopefully we pick up uh, the blue omen. Well, there's a white omen to maybe combo with it. Although this pack has a lot of options. In terms of 2-drops, we're still kind of struggling. So it's possible we end up needing something like Leonin or Envoy. I'll say it can also be a nice one. Can protect our key creature, like the Dream Trawler, if the uh, built-in protection is not enough for some reason. There's a Thirst for Meaning with plenty of enchantments to discard to it. As a nice instant speed draw 3 discard. 
So there's a ton of options. The Omen of the Sun has the best synergy with the Shimmerwing Chimera. Yeah, I mean, making a couple 1-1s one and gaining a bit of life is okay. But the Thirst does help us draw towards the Dream Trawler. If we were lucky enough to already have Dream Trawler in play, it also helps us pump up the Dream Trawler. So maybe it's still uh, the pick. Yeah, if this was the Blue Omen, I would definitely take it. The White Omen's a little bit less exciting. Hopefully we can pick up some cheaper plays in the last pack. Probably fine with a Vexing Goal. And maybe we'll play this Dismissal. Alright, a lot of uh, decent options late. Already have two Eidolons, probably don't need a third. Uh, could potentially want a second Surge, especially against the green decks. Could sideboard a second copy if we're only main decking one. Or I could take an Envoy. Uh, Envoy doesn't do a whole lot for us, it does make my Morphosis and Presence one cheaper. And it is a way to trigger Constellation for two mana. We have a Kraken that cares about it. So it's like fine, but a 1-2 flyer for two is not uh, super exciting. So I might still prefer the Triumphant Surge. But Envoy does play well with Commanding Presence if we want to play that package. And maybe we pick up an additional Aura to go with the Helid's Pilgrim. If our only win condition is Dream Trawler and we can draw it consistently, then I don't think Envoy does much for us. But maybe we need an alternate win condition in case the Dream Trawler gets countered or dealt with some other way. And then I could see the Envoy contributing to that uh, other game plan. Already have infinite Sea Guards. I guess I'll take a Flicker, although don't think we're main decking it in this deck. Instructor is also an option, but we already have a lot of uh, three mana plays. Although I guess some of these we don't necessarily play on turn three. Could take a turtle for the sideboard, could take an instructor as kind of a mediocre main deck card. Don't think we'll need sentry. I'll take a turtle. Alright, even wield the wave rider. Not sure if I'm gonna play that one. So white seem pretty open in this direction. So heading into the last pack, what do we need? Maybe an additional win condition, if that's not uh, asking for too much. And maybe some extra aura to search up with the Heliots Pilgrim. Like the Apathy would be a nice one, since we could use some more removal too. Well, that's a pretty good one to open. Hippocamp can potentially draw a lot of cards in this deck. Don't have like a ton of instant speed plays, but probably enough for it to be good. I've got Double Deny the Divine. I've got uh, Thirst, Vexing Goal. This can also be instant, so... Yeah, the Hippocamp should be good. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll wheel the Denial and play that one too. Hactos is pretty good, but can't really fit that into this deck. Uh, Starlit Mantle can be nice, especially alongside Nyad, as potentially a one mana way to give our creature Hexproof. Or I could take another Deny the Divine, which I definitely wouldn't mind. Probably take our first Mantle. All right, there's our Apathy. Let's see if there's anything else. Pilgrim, but probably want my Apathy before a second Pilgrim. Dawn Evangel could also be okay. We do also have the Flicker Fate on the sideboard, and Flicker Fate plus Apathy can do some cool things where you use the ability and then a response Flicker Fate to move it to another creature, but you still exile the one where the Apathy was on originally. Still just gonna take this. Um, yeah, I might play a Glimpse of Freedom. We don't have any other escape cards, so it kind of feels like a free roll. It's also an instant for the Hippocamp. Don't think I'll need a second turn dismissal. Got a couple options. Daxos doesn't seem amazing in our deck, since we're unlikely to cast it on turn two. Karametra's Blessing, like, could be a fine combat trick. We do have a lot of enchantment creatures. So it is going to be plus two, plus two indestructible for the most part. Question is how much do we care about that effect? Or I can just take another Mantle. Mantle does seem pretty good in this deck. Looks like uh, a Vexing Goal to me here. And then with two Vexing Goals we can maybe use those as uh, win conditions if we don't draw the Dream Trawler. 
an extra instant speed play we can make alongside our various counter spells and mantles. So it's always nice to have a play we can make if the opponent doesn't play into our counter spell or combo trick. Don't know if I'll need a third Nyad. Could potentially want Mystic as like a random two drop we can sideboard in, although I do have Turtle as well to fill that role. Yeah, maybe I'll play a third Nyad, who knows. We did wheel both the Denied Divine and the Surge. I think both cards are pretty reasonable. There's even a second Turtle in case we're facing aggressive decks. I could potentially main deck a third Denied Divine. Surge would probably be a sideboard card as a second copy, but it could be a very good sideboard card. So maybe we just take the good sideboard card over the maybe main deck card. And all right, we got some more counter spells anyway. Didn't think I want memory drain, but I might want a denial. All right, got more deny. Don't think our deck needs Sentinel's Eyes, although it is a cheap escape card and we can search it up with a Helix Pilgrim. But now between Apathy and uh, all the mantles, I think we've got enough auras that I'm not too worried about the Helix Pilgrim. I uh, don't need a second chain, might want uh, Evangel, especially with all the auras we just picked up. So we have more than enough playables, so it's going to be somewhat difficult to make some cuts. Alright, so where do we start? I guess I'll put all the maybes in one pile. Not sure about Envoy, not sure about Evangel, could easily cut one Nyad. And then the Nile's probably our weakest counterspell. Did we get her on the Chimera? I mean Chimera plus Starlit Mantles also combo, since we can just indefinitely give our creature Hexproof. Uh, Wave Riders are maybe, Sea Guards are maybes. I guess Presence is okay, especially if we play the Envoys. And then one Surge probably goes to the sideboard, Sentry doesn't seem necessary. So I could just cut all of these. The Envoys could still be solid alongside Mantle and the uh, Commanding Presence. But we do already have two Vexing Goals. Maybe I'll, I play like one Envoy for Curve. I could see that. But uh, let's see how this looks. So let's put kind of our interaction in a separate pile. So this is kind of what we're uh, working with. So we don't have a ton of top end creatures. So I could potentially consider an extra sea guard just as a big uh, blocker to help us hold off the ground while we chip in with our flying creatures. Double Eidolon could see one being enough in the main deck since we do have a couple other card draw spells. It could shave one Nyad pretty easily too. Pretty happy with the other three drops. I'm not gonna cut Chimera. Kraken seems quite good. And we're not gonna touch the Dream Trawler. So potential cuts here, one Eidolon. Glimpse seems kind of like a free roll without any other escape cards. And then I think we want both mantles. Can search it up with Pilgrim, it's good with Chimera. It's only one mana with Nyat or Envoy in play. And then probably want Commanding Presence to go with our flying creatures and the Pilgrim. Uh, could potentially get away with fewer lands since our curve is relatively low and we do potentially see a lot of cards. The only expensive cards is really the Dream Trawler, which we don't have to cast on turn 6, since we have uh, Glimpse and Thirsts as cheap card draw. And then this would be our deck. Potentially considering an extra Sea Guards, just to have a bit more toughness, maybe over an Eidolon. Could also be slightly more aggressive with the Wave Rider, since we do have a decent chunk of enchantments to enable Constellation. Of course a 3-3 can still block, but it's not an impressive blocker compared to the Sea Guard. So maybe we shave an Eidolon to make room for Sea Guard. Have a bit more toughness 
And then we still have one Envoy, two Nyads to make our enchantments cheaper. I've got two Deny the Divine in the main deck. Could consider a third or the Whirlwind Denial instead. Don't think we have enough cheap creatures to fully leverage Chain to Memory. But I could see this being a good sideboard card. Stern Dismissal would probably be slightly better if our deck was a little bit more tempo-oriented, more aggressive with the Wave Rider as well. But I think we're happy playing a slower control role. And then we still have the Vexing Goals as potential win conditions, but for the most part we would like to win with our uh, Dream Trawler. Yeah, Turtle's actually definitely a, a card we could consider main decking just as a cheap blocker. It's kind of like a cheaper version of the Sea Guard. Definitely not opposed to main decking a turtle. Not sure if it's better than Seaguard or if we want to cut something else for it. But uh, could also just see it as a good sideboard card against some decks. Five Toughness definitely prevents a lot of uh, creatures from attacking. Not sure what the weakest card is in the deck right now. Possible we don't need Commanding Presence, although it can be a nice way to close out the game. And we do have a decent number of flying creatures to go with it. Double Vexing Goal and one Envoy which are good targets. I think maybe this is fine, and then we can bring in Turtle in the matchups where we feel like we need it. And then probably want an extra island over a plains. And this would pretty much be our deck. We could bring in Surge against large creatures. We've got Turtle against Aggro. If the matchup is particularly grindy, we can bring in extra card draw with Eidolon. We've got extra counter spells with Deny and Denial if we need to counter a bomb from the opponent. Alright, turn on Eidolon. So it might be another slow matchup. So this heavily implies Starlit Mantle. Although it's also kind of a free roll, so don't necessarily need to have it. Think I just wanna tap out for Nyat. And then next turn we could go a double vexing goal potentially. And now I'm fine to block since even a mantle doesn't get past uh, three toughness. Could attack with Nyads. But then if they do go for a double block plus Mantle, things could get a little bit messy and I won't be able to double gold them. Maybe should have cast this on upkeep, but I guess since we want to keep up with the Knight of the Divine, this is okay. Soul Reaper doesn't really stop my Vexing Gold beatdown plan, so that's fine. Pilgrim's not bad, although then I wouldn't be able to... I guess never mind, Pilgrim can get Mantle, but we won't be able to keep up the Knight of the Divine is the only issue. Could also go for Commanding Presence, which costs 3 mana. There's not too many flyers they could play that stop the Vexing Goals attacking. Could also just get a removal spell with the Pilgrim. So I have a lot of options. Feels like just getting a mantle's fine. And then go shields down on the Knight of Divine for a turn. Just a nice one mana counter spell for potential removal. And then I could always discard it to the Thirst for Meaning potentially too. Alright. That was a quick one. Yeah, keeping up the Nine of Divine and going for Thirst End of Turn is definitely also consideration there. But uh, 
with my opponent stuck on three, there's not too many scary creatures I can play for three or four mana that I absolutely have to counter with the Deny the Divine was the reasoning. So I'd rather keep up uh, Mantle and then next turn keep up Deny for a potentially more expensive creature. So, uh, against blue-black, didn't see a whole lot. Couple Eidolon, Soul Reaper. They have a lot of Consolation, so or Disenchant is good. Not sure about uh, Triumphant Surge. Blue-black typically doesn't have very large creatures that we need to kill with it. Could bring in my own Eidolon, the second copy, if the game drags out. That's kind of the main consideration here. And then maybe board out the Triumphant Surge until we see some large creatures as evidence. Not sure about the extra Deny the Divine, it's not great if we're on the draw and they play early Eidolons that we can counter with it. So sure, we'll try this. Yeah, I think I'll tap out for Lionfish. Hopefully no Elspeth's Nightmare. Alright, so far so good. Chances of Hippocamp resolving are pretty slim. So I guess uh, a Lionfish attacks and then we'll see. On the one hand, we want to keep Glimpse to go with the Hippocamp. But I might be able to Glimpse and tap down one of their creatures end of turn. And then we can play Hippocamp on turn 5 once we have Mantle up to protect it, which is maybe better. Let's try that. They do have a Vexing Goal, sure. So I could uh, Glimpse right now to tap down a Vexing Goal, essentially. Uh, I'm guessing that's going to take the Hippocamp. So do we want to glimpse? If I glimpse into a Dream Trawler, I'm going to regret doing it. So maybe I should wait. Sure. But yeah, Agonizing Remorse is one of the better answers to a Dream Trawler in hand. Does take the Hippocamp. Better safe than sorry. And I'll probably end up glimpsing, tapping down goal here. Back of Mantle. Pilgrim's not bad. So we'll get in for two and then Pilgrim can search up probably Commanding Presence since we already have Morphosis for a large threat from the opponents and we kind of want to just increase our own clock and with double Mantle to protect. We might be able to land the Commanding Presence and stick it. Maybe should have played my land first in case we needed to double mantle. I guess I just mantle now then. They don't know about the second mantle, at least. Next turn I can play Pilgrim, still keep up Starlit Mantle, and then if we draw a land 6, sack a creature. Yeah, that'll do it. Does get around our mantle pretty well. Alright, so... Now this Heliod's Pilgrim is gonna have to carry the presence But we do have the land to go for it next turn. That doesn't block it, so that's fine. Could take a different approach here, but I think I just want to jam this. We 
We do have Troll or Mana in case we draw it. Shields down on the Knight of Divine, but shields up on Mantle. And next turn we can maybe get rid of the Vexing Goal if it's a problem. It's fine. Bowden Mills over Sleep of the Dead. It's actually pretty effective here. Yeah, I don't think I can afford to get that one tapped. It's not bad. Alright, so definitely gonna keep attacking and then opponent could chomp and then I might be forced to remove their Marauder, but I guess I can remove two creatures unless I want to keep up the Knight of the Vine. So we'll start by attacking, see what happens. Put on chumps. So to keep up deny or not to keep up deny. Opponent's got two cards in graveyard, so they're not too close to getting this one back. I mean, we definitely need to deal with Marauders since I can't take four. And I would rather use Apathy first so they can chum block. So I think we just go Apathy and pass. Sacrifice the Apathy um, to exile the Marauder, then we'll also get an extra card in Graveyard, which I guess could help for Glimpse. So I can still spend my mana in a useful manner. And since this exiles, we're not helping their escape. Yeah, probably want to counter that one. Alright, so... Got four cards in graveyards. This needs five other cards, so we're not going to get to do it this turn. But they will be able to uh, escape Sleep of the Dead once again. But my opponent's out of threats now, so I guess that's fine. So do we do this now? I guess they won't be able to Sleep of the Dead quite yet, since it needs an extra card in graveyard. So I can afford to take two. If we put this on the Vexing Goal, they have a nice Chum Blocker, and then they can Sleep of the Dead once again. So it feels like I just want to hold this. And then I could keep Land in Hand to potentially loot away with uh, Kraken if we draw it, but... If we draw Eidolon, we might need extra land drops. And I'll probably end up uh, exiling the Marauder end of turn too. Definitely exile it before that resolves. Soul Reaper's pretty good in this situation where they can potentially chum block and then sacrifice to still draw a card. So yeah, game's still undecided. Definitely take a Dream Trawler off the top. Another Deny the Divine instead. So I'll attack, and then they might just take four. And what to do with this uh, Morphosis? If I put it on the Vexing Goal, I'm giving them a free Sacrifice Fodder for the Soul Reaper, which is not great. So I might put it on the Soul Reaper itself, and then they can sack it to its own ability, but then they don't get to chump block with it, but then they do get to Sleep of the Dead, my Helix Pilgrim, and I'm taking two from Vexing Goal in the meantime. But I also get to escape Glimpse if this goes to the graveyard. So that's nice. So I think we just uh, enchant the Soul Reaper. I could wait another turn and just chump block for now. But I kind of like fueling Glimpse. And we do have more flyers we could draw ourselves to block the Vexing Goal. So it's not like it's a 100% unblockable card here. Hmm. 
Ooh, Underworld Charger. Probably want to exile that. So they can escape their sleep here. And yeah, it's going to be a close one. We get an extra draw stop with Glimpse. Let's see how much mana. Should have enough to do both. Doesn't matter what we exile. And then what do I do with this land? Probably still play it. Alright, so we've got seven power in play, which is one shy of lethal, but on the board we're looking good. So, it all boils down to our next couple top decks. I guess I could sack it now. Don't know if there's a huge reason to do so. I guess I hit my land drop so I can have one extra land in play. Don't think we need an extra blocker in play. Well, at long last we draw Dream Trawler. So opponent can put us to one. If they draw an aura, we're dead. Wait, was that the match already? I guess we won the first game. Alright, well, <laughs> we have yet to cast our Dream Trawler. Finally drew it after uh, two entire matches. Sure. Got a nice uh, beatdown draw here, although Horn Beetle's a scary card. Definitely happy to trade Lionfish for it. And then we keep up uh, Deny the Divine. If they play for a power creature, I'm happy to exile it. Harpy. Harpy's interesting. Can probably let that one slide. And I'll happily ambush Horn Beetle with the Vexingle if they attack. They don't. Probably still keep up our instants. And hopefully they play something main phase. Blessing. Yeah, let's counter that one. And we also get to tap down a creature, which is pretty nice. And which one do we want to tap down? Probably the Harpy. Grasp the Vexing Goal. So they've got some nice cheap removal. So the plan here is to attack with a lionfish, play Nayat, and then we can glimpse for one mana. Still happy to trade. Opponent takes it, sure. The auto tapper doesn't take the discount into account, so you gotta often manually tap when it comes to cards like the Nayat. 
It's a good card. Also, not a ton of green devotion at the moment. So it's just kind of a slow card draw engine. Alright, it's nice to have both. So, do I want to trade Eidolon for Harpy? I think I do, since I'm pretty far from activating it, and we've got a Glimpse as our alternate source of uh, card advantage in a way. And now with the Vexing Goal, trading for Harpy seems nice. And we can almost escape this again. No thanks. Probably still going to prioritize playing the Vex single over drawing a card. But I might draw main phase in case... Uh, I guess never mind. If we draw a counterspell then... I might as well get the Naya discount by playing this in the opponent's turn. Sure, let's get in for four. Yeah, I'm thinking if there's any two drop I would draw into with a glimpse. I guess there's like the one two flyer. Yeah, there's not too many cheap creatures I still have left. So I think I'll just wait. Grasp goes to the graveyard, so they're looking for something better. It's pretty good. Can kill the goal. Could potentially glimpse into a mantle or a counterspell. Alright, Pilgrim could have gotten a mantle, but of course if we cast glimpse in our turn. It would have cost uh, three, so I wouldn't have had enough. Probably want a Pilgrim for Commanding Presence, and then no attacks this turn. Or I could still trade Nyad for Blind Breath. Not sure if that's worth it. Of course, now the card advantage from Nylea starts kicking in. Could also search up Mantle, but it still doesn't let me attack here, so it doesn't seem uh, good enough. Yeah, I think I like Commanding Presence, and hope they don't draw a removal. Finds Timurit, it's gonna get rid of my Glimpse. Also Revoke and Exile it. Can also exile Nylea here, so it's pretty good. So I guess this turn we're gonna just play Nyad, revoke Nylea, and then next turn we can think about this commanding presence. Could've also played Apathy on one of their creatures to clear a path for presence. But now that they're not drawing a million cards per turn, we can take our time. Alright, so what happens if I Commanding Presence Nyad? Four power first strike. So we'll have five toughness, so they could triple block. And then I guess I could kill Blight Breath and the Grove Dancer, and Timurit doesn't kill Nyad, so we're good to attack. Oh no, did they draw final death? E to extinction, ouch. Well, it's too bad. Could have waited until we drew a mantle, but they had one card in hand, so... Alright, well, now we just got a top deck Dream Trawler, I guess. They had their Nylea, it's only fair.
probably gonna apathy the forerunner. Hippocamp. That could be a nice way to get back into it. So I guess I don't have to necessarily exile the forerunner right away. Unless I want to play around a disenchant. But it might pay off to play Hippocamp if we draw a more expensive instant. Although I guess most of them are pretty cheap thanks to the Nyad. So there's not a ton of upside to playing Hippocamp now since the 2-2 body in play doesn't do anything. So I could wait. I guess the main reason is discard from the opponents. So I'm not sure here. And then, uh, yeah. I need to draw some instant speed plays and snowball some card advantage with a Hippocamp. I guess holding Hippocamp also maybe plays out a bit better if we draw a Dream Trawler and we need a card in hand for Hexproof. Yep, that'll do it. So now do we play it and hope they don't top deck removal, or do we hold it and then we get owned by a discard effect? Probably play it. It's close. They're more likely to top deck removal than they are a discard spell, that's for sure. Question is, like, are we potentially losing the game where they find other ways of tapping down Dream Trawler and they just attack with a bunch of creatures and we fall behind that way? Yeah, we'll, we'll play it. Close decision, though. Alright, we successfully cast a Dream Trawler for the first time in this draft. Let's see if we can attack with it successfully as well. Alright, opponent explodes, so I guess that answers that question. Alright, so black-green seems like a matchup where Triumphant Surge could be good, although the creatures they showed us were kind of on the small side. They didn't show any, like, enormous uh, green creatures, for instance, outside of the Forerunner. So I'm still happy with the first copy, but I'm not sure if I want a second. Horn Beetle, of course, could also become pretty large. Anything else in the sideboards? I think I like an extra copy of Deny the Divine. And can easily cut Envoy. Could see adding an extra Eidolon. And I could also see bringing in like an extra good blocker like Turtle. But uh, yeah, don't hate this setup. Alright, seems fine. Got to turn to Lionfish again. Mire Triton's a good one. Although we can maybe trade off for the Pilgrim. So we already face a tough decision next turn. Do we tap out? Do we keep up Deny? At this point I'm thinking we probably just tap out for Pilgrim, which gets us a removal spell. And probably just Apathy. And then next turn we can maybe keep up our instance if they don't add too much to the board. Well, sadly they did have turn for Nylia, which punishes me for not keeping up the Knight of Divine. Still happy to trade. So the plan of kind of sitting on counter spells doesn't necessarily work against an opponent that can draw some extra cards with Nylia, but then again tapping out for Seaguard also doesn't accomplish a whole lot. So I'll probably still wait. And I can glimpse if they don't present a target. It's a juicy target. Now we can... Uh, Double spell, which is pretty nice. So we have some pressure going. 
it's another juicy target, so the Forerunner was bait. And a Timurid too. When we have a Glimpse, I would like to get rid of this Timurid, since we probably need Glimpse to draw us into either Dream Trawler or Revoke existence for Nylea. So maybe this turn we just Apathy and Exile Timurid right away before they get to Exile anything. Or I can go Sea Guard plus Glimpse for one mana, but then they can Exile it. And we have dealt with two large creatures now. So they didn't, didn't seem to have too many of those in the deck. Uh, can't really Apathy the Gods unless it turns into a creature first, which I don't think is happening. So we're just gonna double Nylea, finds Triton, that's a good one. Alright, I guess this turn... I can go Seaguard plus Glimpse, or I guess I can Glimpse first. Since the mana discount doesn't matter too much. In case we find a good card here. Yeah, I guess Chimera's a good card. Alternatively, we could still Glimpse, thanks to the Nyad making it cheaper too. If I play a second Nyad, this will only cost single blue to escape. Um, so that's an option too. But getting the Flying Pressure going might be more important. Don't really want to trade. Ouch. It's painful. Although it would have killed uh, Nyad as well. Guess we'll draw first here. Hippocamp's not bad. Alright, so I probably need to make one trade at least. Is there a reason to double block? Uh, thinking about all the instants they could have. If they have plus three, then I don't want to double block. So single block seems fine. Typhon, alright. That's their first Typhon. So now we know we can maybe value the Surge a bit higher. Could just turn it into a fish. Although I kind of want to draw my cards here. So I'll probably wait. And if we turn it into a fish and a chum block, they can still get it back from the graveyard too. And I guess that happens. Toss turn on Nylea. But I didn't have enough mana to draw into a counterspell and play it. We need a Dream Trawler off the top, basically. Now, of course, I could turn Nylea into a fish, but I'm pretty sure that if they lose the Devotion and this turns back into an enchantment, this will fall off. So that's uh, still a problem. I guess I can trade for the Death Toucher. Take nine. Alright, that's an answer to Nylea, so we're still in it. So, exile Nylea, turn this into a fish. 
It leaves me with uh, six, seven. Not enough mana to do anything else, really. I'll still take two from Petitioner. Or I can just, I guess, play Seaguard, which blocks Typhon, and revoke Nylea. That's probably better. Alright, they're gonna eat my Seaguard. I guess that's uh, kind of bad. So now I have to trade my Hippocamp for Petitioner instead of getting to draw more cards. So it goes. So we'll be at one, my opponent will have a fish. And then we top deck Dream Trawler. Is this how the fairy tale ends? No, a scavenging harpy is gonna kill us. I mean, the only way we stay alive is by turning the harpy into a fish, but of course then they can escape Typhon. Which is not great. I guess they need one more land in order to do it. I guess never mind. This also gains three. So I could just use Surge on Typhon, and then if they do draw the land to escape Typhon, I can turn it into a fish, and hopefully we'll draw one of our cheap flyers to block the Harpy, or of course Dream Trawler. Yeah, I don't need to Surge now, but I'm wondering if we want to Morphosis the Harpy, or if we just take two. Because this gains three up to four, so that's two attacks from the Harpy. But we have fewer answers to a 7-7 seven, seven Typhon than we do a 2-1 Harpy. So... I think, uh, I think I wait. Nice, so they are gonna escape. So we're still dead if we don't draw another answer here. So we've got the 2-2 two -two flash flyers we could draw. But now Dream Trawler would be an awkward draw. All right, there's a Vexingle, so we're still in it. This game's pretty epic. And now we can draw Dream Trawler and everything is fine. Oh, never mind. Whoops. I forgot about the counters. All right, well, that's a little awkward. <laughs> I guess we won't show them the Vexingle. Yeah, I guess it's not an actual 7-7, but it's a 4-4 with 3 plus 1 counters on it. I mean, I guess we would have died regardless then. So yeah, um, Morphos is not quite the same as a, a Dreadful Apathy in that spot. So, any changes for the next game? So they did show the 4-4, which makes Surge a little bit better. So I'm thinking we want maybe a second one. One eye alone seems fine, don't know if I have time for two of them. Mantle seems okay, they've got some expensive removal spells. So yeah, I'm considering the extra surge basically. But uh, unclear what I would cut for it. Seaguard seems like a pretty decent blocker. I think I stay put. We'll need to draw third land, I guess even a fourth land. But we've got an answer for Nylea and for the big spider. Yeah, I could have used the turn to fish on the Typhon in the first place. But in that particular turn, playing the 2-5 blocker would have worked out a little bit better, because we could have also prevented the attack from the 2-2 if they didn't have removal. So that kind of changed our plan a little bit when they eventually found removal and we were forced to trade. But the original plan was indeed to uh, just turn the 4-4 into a fish right away. Probably Pilgrim to get our good removal. Or I could pretend to have a counterspell and then play a goal end of turn, which also taps down a creature. I think I'm happy to trade here. So we'll attack. Yep, 
Yeah, maybe we'll just wait. I could also revoke Timurad, but I'm not in a hurry. Deny is not bad, although I don't have an instant speed play to go alongside it this turn. Probably still uh, keep up our counter spell. Tap down Timurat. Want to keep up the pressure here. That's fine. So we can attack for four. Let's see, this can gain them a bit of life. So they can basically gain two with this. And then Timurat has a similar ability. So I could revoke the binding right now, is what I'm considering. It does seem reasonable, although if they then play Nylea I'm gonna be sad. So what's the play? Could also just play Pilgrim, get another removal spell, or Mantle, or maybe get the uh, Commanding Presence, although we still need land 4, and at 4 mana we've got a bunch of plays. At this point, if they play Nylea, I guess it doesn't matter if they're gonna die. Although next turn Timurat will be a good blocker once again. I might just revoke Timurat and then try and use our current board presence to get in damage. Using Apathy on the next blocker they play, essentially. But eventually this binding could be good, since they've got some powerful creatures in the graveyard. So points back to 10. On Nexus Wardens. Yeah, that's surprisingly effective. And a second Timurat, ouch. Yeah, that's one way of punishing uh, our decision last turn. All right, so we're in trouble. Don't have a good attack. Don't have any great play. Next turn, they probably get back the Blight Breath, which they could play right away if they have a land, which kills my Vexing goal, but then maybe Chimera survives and I can use Pilgrim to get Commanding Presence on Chimera to start attacking, maybe that's our plan. So should I just play Pilgrim get Commanding Presence right away? Or do I just thirst to hit my land drops, can tap down Wardens and maybe get an attack in? And then maybe they'll respect the Counterspell as well. And what do we tap down? Probably the Wardens. Hippocamp could be quite good. Although they want to play it into the Blind Breath. Could also attack with the Lionfish. If they block, I could Mantle for the pump, but it's still a trade, so that's not great. I kind of want to keep up Mantle for this Blight Breath, but this uh, Charger's going to start hitting us pretty hard too. Yeah, if they have a play other than Blight Breath, things will get kind of awkward since we won't be using our mana. I guess they might play Creature that dies to Triumphant Surge, so that's kind of the hope. But I don't think I can tap out for a Chimera into the Blight Breath here. We'll try this. Another Maya's Grasp. I guess it also prompts the Mantle. Tap down Wardens again.
they've already played lands, and Typhon is their next card, which we can either Surge or Apathy. If we still had a second Mantle, this Naiad would be pretty strong. I guess, let's see, no. Chimera's on our upkeep, so we can't return the Mantle right away. But if I play Chimera, then they have two valuable targets to choose from with the Blind Breath. And one of them will uh, stick around. Alternatively, I could bluff a Counterspell once again and end up just using Surge on Typhon. Although they have almost enough to escape it here. So Apathy would be a better answer to it. Although we might need to use this on the Wardens. Although we could still Pilgrim for Commanding Presence on one of our Flyers. So yeah, a lot of decisions. I'll just play Chimera. And they can decide which creature to kill. Goes for Vexing Goal. Pretty happy if they play kinda scared here. Eh, never mind. They heard me. Yeah, double blocking Timura doesn't seem great. So probably taking all the damages. I would like to draw some lands to empty your hand, although it's not like land 5 enables anything special here. So we're kind of in an awkward spot with all these 3 mana cards in hand. Yeah, the long-term plan would be Pilgrim get Commanding Presence on Chimera to attack past Wardens, but don't really have time for that. Play Pilgrim, get Commanding Presence. But then next turn, how does the situation look like? Because they can attack with pretty much everyone. So they might be able to kill me through the Commanding Presence Chimera regardless. The thing that prevents the most damage right now is probably... Apathy the Typhon or Surge to gain a bit of life, but then they can escape. This turn I'm just gonna Surge, which can also tap down an extra creature thanks to the Lionfish. Don't have enough mana for Nyad plus Surge, since we only have five. And then we'll tap down probably the Charger, which I don't want to block, since I'm happy trading Lionfish for Blind Breath. Alright, so that gains us a bit of life. Still not in great shape, but that bought us a bit of time. So we'll probably need to Apathy that. And yeah, we're kinda choked on mana. It's possible I should have just traded this Chimera for Charger a long time ago. But we also need a way to eventually win. So yeah, now we have six mana, so we can double spell. So I could Apathy, Typhon, play Pilgrim, get Commanding Presence. How does that look like? Looks alright. Or I could, let's see, any other removal left? We've got the turn to fish. Could also be an option, but then how are we winning? I guess I could also go Nyad, which blocks Timurets. And then if we draw land, we can Pilgrim for Commanding Presence and play it. And if we don't draw land, I could still Pilgrim for Turn to Fish and play it. I guess that's maybe better. So the board is a little bit more under control. Still have the Charger, that's a bit of a problem. Take three for now. And then... Let's see, Chimera. Hold up. Let's go full control for a second. It's not the same as Flicker, is it? Because, yeah, we can't respond to the ability the same way. But 
let's say I were to target Dreadful Apathy, what happens? Yeah, there's no window where I can exile the creature and then get it back. So I don't think uh, this works. With Flicker it works because we can activate Apathy and then Flicker it, but uh, I don't think this works. Yeah, indeed, the exile would resolve first. So we just end up exiling Typhon and not getting the Apathy back. Alright, so we did draw the lands, but my opponent also drew a giant spider, which I just now noticed. So that's uh, potentially bad, although plus two plus two on first strike still gets past it for the most part. So I think we still pilgrim for commanding presence. And even if they double block, they can kill it. We'll get a chum blocker. So I think this is okay. So, don't necessarily want a double block charger. I guess I could, but then I lose my good blocker for Timurit. So it's not like we're preventing a lot of damage. So double chump seems fine. And then this turn I could chump my Chimera with Wardens, but I could also decide to keep it back. If I so choose. Would love to top deck Green Trawler, that would make things a little easier. Not gonna bounce anything. Could always move the target of the Apathy, I guess, but does it do us any favors? Yeah, we wouldn't quite have lethal, even if we remove the Wardens, it's only five. So I don't think we bounce it back. But it is a play we should definitely keep in mind. If they only leave one reach creature back. Kraken's a decent blocker, so that helps. So in this case, what happens if we attack? Opponent chumps. And we have two blockers back, so even one removal spell doesn't kill me on the spot, so I think we're good to go. This game's been pretty intense. Wow, opponent concedes. That was a close one. Felt like we were behind pretty early on in the game, but kind of clawed our way back eventually hitting our land drop so we could double spell. Alright, 3-0, not bad. And we've only cast Dream Trawler once, so didn't get a ton of free wins yet. Let's keep it going. Hand seems okay. It does hinge pretty hard on this Hippocamp uh, surviving, but if we can potentially wait until we can play Hopocamp with Mantle backup. That's a little bit better. Although turn 2 Rage Hound definitely delivers the beatdown. So we're on the back foot. This seems like a matchup for the turtle out of the sideboard. And maybe a second 2-5. Uh, Alright, Burns full Grixis. And they're full aggro. This is gonna hurt. Probably forced to turn one of them into a fish. I guess a charger makes more sense. More rage hounds. And a thaumaturge. Ouch. Can go Hippocamp plus Eidolon. Eidolon can trade for 
Rage Hounds. And then next turn I can start uh, getting some cards flowing with Hippocamp if it's still alive. Ouch. That's a very efficient answer for it. Also triggers Thaumaturge, which now becomes Hippocamp. They did the old uh, switcheroo. At least now I can revoke existence it, so that's nice, I guess. Well, our opponent certainly means business. So we'll revoke the Hippocamp. Kind of sad that we don't get to spend that other mana. But yeah, I didn't really see a better play. I could Vexing Gold to trade for Rage Hound. Seems kind of medium. They could, of course, have another instant speed enchantments to fizzle, revoke, but doesn't seem likely. All right, so now they're left with a Rage Hound in play. One in the graveyards, two cards in hand. Remorse to take away, not sure what. Maybe the Surge, in case they end up escaping one of the Rage Hounds. Takes her only creature instead. And they have enough mana to... I guess they need one more card in Graveyard to escape. Another Mantle, yep. A 2-5 blocker here would go a long way. So yeah, Turtle definitely coming in. The extra Seahorse, the 2-5 is coming in. And it looks like we're just dead on board. Alright, that was pretty brutal, but uh, we'll get to be on the play now, which makes Rage Hound a bit worse too. Alright, so cars that are coming in. Uh, turtle. Seaguard. And then I could consider Eidolon since it can trade early and later it's still okay. Uh, Chain to Memory seems pretty good if they're forced to attack. And especially if we bring in some cheaper creatures, uh, I could consider an extra Nyad. Even like a Rumbling Sentry could be fine in this matchup. So what don't we like? Envoy seems a bit uh, small. Revoke, not at its best here, so it's a maybe. Usually still finds the targets, but not great against their aggressive escape creatures. I uh, haven't seen a ton of expensive removal, so Mantle's also pretty weak. Don't want too many counter spells, but definitely on the play they're gonna be a bit better. So I don't mind a couple. And then... Uh, presence is also pretty good against the Rage Hounds. And I guess I don't mind one Surge, since it can catch their creature on the way out once they escape. It's just not great on the front side, necessarily. So I could cut all four of these, potentially. Could potentially keep one mantle still. But I'm not opposed to cutting two. So I could still make room for, like, Rumbling Sentry. Dismissal could maybe be okay. Um, probably have enough three drops where I don't want an extra Nyad. We already brought in Chain to Memory as a cheap spell. So, let's go big with the sentry, I guess. And I think we want to be on the play. Alright, this ends fine if we draw second blue for the sea guard. There's our rage hound. Don't have double blue yet. But I guess for now I can just trade. Don't think I want to turn it into a fish quite yet. Could also take it and go for the commanding presence, but they'll probably still have removal for my fish in hand. 
Yeah, sure. Another one. So now do we turn it into a fish? I don't think we do. Since there's so many draws that invalidate 3-1. Uh, My opponent is all the rage. I guess I'll go for sentry first. Didn't really have time for counter spells. Alright, I guess that worked out. Probably keep land in hand. It's close, I might want to play both of these in the same turn, but don't really need it on a planes anymore. And next turn if we play Commanding Presence, then uh, I might want to discard land to Constellation. Alright, I guess uh, the Rage Hounds are dealt with. I'm gonna wait a turn on the Presence, giving them a chance to maybe use removal. Our plan of uh, high toughness creatures worked out. And they might have been missing black mana, which is why they were stuck with a bunch of cards in hand, so... Playing an aggressive three-color deck does have its uh, downsides as well. So any changes for game three? We will be on the draw, which makes Deny the Divine a bit worse. So I could consider going minus one Deny, plus one Bound Spell. Since we kind of make up the extra card by being on the draw. And everything else still seems reasonable. I'm considering Envoy as just a cheap blocker to trade off for Rage Hound. Or an extra Eidolon. Since it's still fine in the late game. I guess I don't hate it. And then what do we cut? Maybe just cut all the Deny the Divines on the draw. Sure. Might be a bit too aggressive here. It's not like my opponent can't have a late game and then I would want some of those counter spells. But I'm kind of assuming we're going to be behind on board, so counter spells are not going to be very good. Sure. One of these days we'll have a Dream Trawler in our opening hand. Pretty nice curve here. Probably getting Apathy. I'll take the trade. Ooh, ouch. My feelings. That hurts. Well, now what? I guess I could go Hippocamp plus Chain to Memory. That's pretty appealing. Because we get to shrink the Rage Hound that's forced to attack. We get to draw a card right away. And then they can take my Presence or Apathy if they want to. Alternative is playing Sea Guard, which could also work out. It's just a good blocker for Rage Hound. Now nah, we'll, we'll go with Hippocamp. And then I have to respond to the Nightmare trigger here. Maybe wanted to do it upkeep in case of a counterspell, I guess, but... All right. Draw Vexing Goal, and then... I guess Nyat would be okay, because we can go Nyat into Vexing Goal, trigger Seahorse. And then do we want to draw 
a removal spell afterwards. Seems okay, especially if it, if they take the apathy here. Of course, if they kill Hippocamp, then this play is a little bit less exciting. Takes Commanding Presence. Thaumaturge. And another Rage Hound. Alright. So we get to eat this Rage Hound. And then go Nyad. Into Vexingol. And then we'll take it for three, that's fine. Hello there. Alright, so now our plan is basically to try to stay alive. Don't have a very efficient turn. So probably just Sea Guard and pass. And play defense now that we drew the Dream Trawler. Don't need to chip in with the Vexingle, seems unnecessary. Ooh, Phoenix. That's an exciting rare. They have two mana up, one card in hand. I think I'm okay just making infinite trades. This stays alive. We haven't seen any combo tricks from them yet. Do we win now? I guess we gotta watch out for the Thaumaturge copying this. So maybe I should have apathied this first. But I guess this targets, so we could have still discarded if we wanted to. Alright, so... We get our first attack in this entire draft with Dream Trawler. And then I'm probably going to turn the Thaumaturge into a fish. I want to keep some amount of cards in hand to protect Dream Trawler. So I guess I'll keep lands in hand. And our opponent packs it in. Finally. Sweet. Alright, nice clean 5-0. But definitely had a lot of close games in there too. Alright, pack one, pick one. Theros Beyond Death. What do we take? Clothus is quite good. It is a pretty heavy commitment. It's two colors. Don't expect this to turn into a creature right away. But the static ability, especially if you don't have a ton of escape cards yourself, gets better since it is a double-edged sword. Clothus is not a May ability. If there's a card in the graveyard, you have to get rid of it. So if you have a lot of escape yourself, Clothus will eventually get rid of your graveyard as well once the opponent's graveyard is empty. So it can be a little awkward, but the effect is still quite powerful. Is it better pack one, pick one, than drag to the underworlds? I'm not sure. This is one of the better removal spells in the set. It's only a single color. It's a lot more flexible than Clothus as a first pick. So, I think the better pick is probably Drag, but of course if we're like playing the set and we're just trying to have some fun, try the new exciting cards, I could totally see myself taking Clothus as well. And then the Blessing is also a nice one at common, probably the third best card in the pack, followed by probably Chimera fourth pick. I guess I'll take uh, Kira best the Sea God, or Ashok, one of those two. Otherwise, not a super exciting pack. Omen of the Sea, probably my pick. Although Daxus could also be fine. It's just a pretty heavy commitment towards white right away. Mm, 
Nylea's intervention, probably the weakest of the interventions. Apathy and Myers Grasp are both excellent, so I would probably take those. Probably still take those over Eidolon. Eidolon can be a very powerful card, but it is a bit of a build around, so it's not going to be great in any deck, whereas Apathy and Grasp don't really require much of you, and they're just very efficient removal spells, and probably respectively the best commons in their colors. I guess you could make a case for Final Death being better than Grasp. Probably take the first couple Final Deaths over Grasp, but then if you need to work on your curve, you might want a cheaper 2-mana removal option as well. A Labyrinth is not a bad first pick, since it's colorless, goes into any deck. So it's definitely not a bad card to start your draft with. I think I would take a Labyrinth back one pick one here. Blessing is the next best card in the pack. Great way to enable uh, Consolation, Heroic, and uh, eventually might end up in the graveyard for escape too. Thaumaturge can be quite powerful. Do need to enable it with Consolation. But it's only 2 mana, so potentially for 2 mana you can steal the biggest creature on the board. Or, well, not steal, but copy it. And uh, if you're the one with the largest creature, this helps you close out the game. If the opponent has the largest creature, then you can at least uh, try and trade for it. And all that for just 2 mana, so it's definitely a powerful 2-drop. Would I take it over Farika Spawn, which I deem to be the best uh, uncommon in the entire set? Not sure. Spawn is amazing. So that's definitely a close pick. Another Labyrinth. Punishment can be good removal if you're aggressive enough. Although I haven't seen a ton of successful aggressive white decks, but uh, maybe those will come together once we transition to best of one. Erebos' Intervention is excellent removal. Uh, probably be my pick here. Nothing else too exciting. And our last pack. A nice Temple of Malice. Nice for the collection. Would almost always play it if I'm either black or red. And of course, very happily play it if we're black red. Don't think I'm taking it over a card like Archon of Filing Stars. Uh, pack one, pick one, which is a great... 6 mana creature, usually gets something back from the graveyard. Alright, well, I think that's gonna just about wrap things up for today. Had a lot of fun with our Dream Trawler draft. So yeah, that's gonna be it for me today. Wanna thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.